Hi family, thanks for coming back here once again. But if you're new here, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please like my video and turn on the notification bell so that each time I post, you'll be notified. So these are the tools we are going to be using for um, the pixie cuts. And I'm using the block head size, size 22, with a dome cup. And the dome cup is very light at the ends, where the band is, elastic band is, is very light. And so I'm adjusting it onto the block head. And I'm going to mark the places I'm going to be sewing the tracks on, or the hair piece on. I start marking on the band at the nip area, and I make sure the tracks are going to be very close. Because it's, um, the hair is light, you need to sew them closely together so that you don't have um, potholes or a lot of spacing in between. Um, this will prevent potholes when trimming it because we we'll definitely trim it. And if they are not closely um, sewn together, we are going to have depressions or we are going to have places where the hair will be very light and you can see that that area is very light as compared to the other sides so um this how i'm marking it i don't think it's that visible for you to see but i think you can make do with this so um since it's a fringe pixie cut whatever i do on the right side i do it to the left side and the ceiling is going to be at the crown area that will be it's supposed the ceiling is supposed to be in the middle I'm marking the dome cap with a crayon. There are different types of dome caps, but I prefer using the breathable ones. So they are very tiny holes in this one. And the dome caps do vary because some of them have very thick bands, but the one I'm using has a very light band. So this is going to prevent the cap from shrinking. I've tried using the dome caps with thicker bands and it didn't go well because the caps shrunk. But using this with a very light band, this particular type of dome cap, it came out perfect. So sewing a pixie cut on a dome cap is just okay. You shouldn't have to worry about it if you have the right dome cap to use. I'm still making the markations on the dome cap and we'll soon be changing the pattern. So please stay tuned. When you get to this part, that's the occipital area. You need to mark them closer than it was at the bottom. Pardon me, my lines are not very straight, but <laughs> it should work. So don't really, so far as you are making the right demarcations on the net, that should be fine. You shouldn't have to worry about it being straight. But when I'm sewing, I'm going to be making it very straight. So that shouldn't be a problem. And with where I'm marking from, I start marking from the band, but sometimes I jumped that particular step because when I stitch with a machine on the band at the frontal area, it really shrinks the cap. So if you try on the cap before sewing, when you sew the other tracks before um, wearing it, before sewing it onto the band and it feels big, then it's okay to sew on the band at the frontal area. But usually I skip that step. And then when I'm done sewing and I feel like I need to put something or I need to make the front fuller, I then can sew on the band. But when I'm sewing it, I make sure I use my fingers to straight, um, stretch it out to be able to um, prevent it from shrinking. So I'm marking the middle area. But I make sure the where I'm going to seal is directly at the middle. If not, you have your sealing shifting to the side the left side or to the right side which is going to look funny but this is a fringe so definitely the ceiling has to be in the middle if you are able to make your demarcations or your lines on the dome cap then we've crossed the first step of sewing on the dome cap with the sewing machine so i'm going to be using the zigzag and then i put the speed on four because i want it to be fast and then i make the intervals of the stitches or the zigzag between three and four and then the tension i make it also between three and four so it depends on how far you want the stitches to go but i i prefer using these measurements 
and I put it on the higher speed, which is four, and I make sure I put it on B. I'm using the butterfly sewing machine, so I put it on B, which is zigzag, and it's perfect for me to sew. And I'm going to be using the black pearl 24 pieces. And I'm going to begin stitching. So I'm going to start from the first line. And then I'm going to go on with the same method or steps for the other tracks. I make sure I stitch back and forth at the beginning of each track. And at the end of each track, I make sure I stitch back and forth so that my tracks will be secure. I don't want any hair sticking out when I'm done or when the customer or client is wearing it. Then it keeps coming off that thing can be so annoying so i make it a point to do that all the time so as you can see it's, it's neatly sewn down and i'm going to be repeating the same steps on each track or each line that i've made i'm going to sew track each track is to one line until i get to the occipital area where i would want to double it to make that place look fuller sometimes doubling at a point will help you it's faster and it's better because the more tracks you stitch the more likely your cap will shrink so you can do that just to avoid shrinking of your cap and to spend less time stitching onto the cap mind you you need to keep the cap flat on onto the sewing machine so that you can stitch to prevent any folding of the cap because if any part of the cap folds it's going to shrink or it's going to be uncomfortable when worn so at all times you, just, you must just make sure that the cap is flat onto the surface that you are sewing onto i strongly believe that if you've been able to sew the first two or three tracks then we can make it to the finish this isn't difficult so if you just follow these steps that i've given you'd be able to do it so don't be discouraged if it doesn't go on well the first time just keep on practicing you'll surely get it i didn't get this thing in just one day i've made mistakes with the first or two caps and i realized um, i had to uh, make changes because if this particular method doesn't work for me i use another and as i continued practicing it just went well for me so this shouldn't be anything discouraging if it doesn't go well the first time your cup might be too small it might be too big but you can make changes to the next one that you make but i'll definitely be making a video on how to make a cup smaller a dome cap smaller when you are sewing um, a pixie cut like this or any other wig because sometimes the dome caps are usually bigger if my head size is size 21 or 21 inches and then the cap is bigger i might have um, a little bit of air or balloon um, at the occipital area which means i'd have to reduce it before i start stitching but in my next video on, or any other video that i'm going to make i'm going to show you how to reduce it before you sew just to prevent that but you must also know that okay if this is the method i use for this particular cap that it didn't that didn't work for me then it means in your next cap you must know what you did in the first one that didn't help you so you are going to be making adjustments or changes to that particular um area so that should help you better your skill when it comes to sewing with a dome cap using a sewing machine as you sew make sure your fingers are firmly placed on top of the um, tracks so that it doesn't shift or move to any other area that you don't want to sew onto so just make sure you place your fingers on it while you stretch out the cap don't expand the cap you are just laying it flat onto the surface so that um, it doesn't fold at any time as you can see me do i'm not stretching out the cap because if this is an elastic it has a bit of elastic in it so if you stretch out the net then it's going to be bigger so i just make sure that i use my fingers to lay it flat as i stitch my tracks i'm going step by step and i'm still using the lines as my guide so i'm going to sew on each and every single line that i made on the dome cap 
so fam this is what the inside of the cap looks like but they are going to be excess threads which will be cutting them off anyways so either you cut them as you stitch or you cut them at the end of making the wake up if you don't cut them out or off they are going to be hanging out and your work is going to look very very dirty we are not giving up we are still continuing this may take a while but we are not giving up so let's do this so you see the threads sticking out i'm going to be cutting them off very soon but maybe that's going to be when i'm done or as i stitch so and i've gotten to the point where i have to go round onto the cap so i'm going to go round in circles because i've gotten to the point where i would have to seal it so we'll soon get there so kindly stay tuned and i'm showing you the frontal band that i didn't sew the wefts onto i've gotten to the occipital area and i'm doubling the tracks so that i will sew less onto the wake cap so now i'm stitching the tracks in circles so i'm going to go around before i seal it so i'm still going to use the lines as my guide and sew all around till i get to the middle area that i demarcated for the ceiling so i'm still stitching the tracks in circles and i'm going around but at this point i doubled my tracks it's up to you but that's what i just decided to do to avoid a lot of stitches so usually at the nap area it's advisable to use single tracks to avoid bulkiness at the back but as time goes on it gets um, to the occipital area so from there to the middle part or the frontal area you can double your tracks so that's exactly what i did the reason being that I want the nip area or the back to be flat so that the occipital area can protrude. That's why I double the tracks and I wouldn't want the top to be flat. That's why I also double the tracks when I got there. I'm going to sew on and on and on until I get to the area where I'd have to seal. So I'm going to stitch until I get to the area where I demarcated for the sealing to be. You can see that the cap is trying to get in my way, but you'd have to position it in such a way that um, the other parts do not go beneath the needle. If not, you sew it to other parts of the wig and your work is going to be really, really, really messy. So you just have to be careful and make sure at all times that the cap is flat. This side may be a bit difficult but you'd have to be, take precaution. I'm still going round in circles until I get to the very point where I'd have to seal it. So sometimes I'm able to use a sewing machine to seal it to the very end. But for beginners, you can also, I'll show you a different method of um, sealing it so but whichever one that you're comfortable with you can give it a try i've gotten to the very end and that's what the inside looks like so i'm cutting off the excess threads that are hanging out just to make my work look neat you can't certainly leave them in there you'd have to cut them off So we've gotten to the point where we'd have to seal. So my cap is ready, almost ready. Okay, and so this is the part I didn't sew the tracks onto. But you can decide to put or stitch um, tracks onto it if you wish. It's optional. But if you want your front to be fuller, then you can stitch onto it. So... From here, we are going to be trimming our hair. So I placed it back onto the block head 
and I'm going to be using my trimmer this is a type that you can put blade in so I've inserted my blade and then I'm trimming it because it's um, already short we wouldn't need to trim much we just have to reshape it to the desired to our desired taste so be mindful when cutting because there are two sides to this trimmer so I usually use a type that will cut less but there's a part that will cut the hair blunt so if you're not careful and um, you use the wrong side you might end up cutting too deep and your work wouldn't go as planned so that's how I'm using it but when I turn it I'm trying to get some ends to be blunt but I usually use this when I'm at the occipital area so I'm trimming the sideburns now and I'm careful not to cut it too short if not when you wear it you're going to have your own hair sticking out and it wouldn't look too good so usually I leave that side to be a bit long it's by choice so that depends on you and this is the frontal area and then I'm going to trim just a little bit I wouldn't trim much too because I wouldn't want the front to be too light but if of course you want your front to be short or shorter than what I have here I decide to trim some more so I'm still trimming it so guys this isn't as difficult as you think it may look until you give it a try so let's just start from the start and then see what we can make out of this if I've been able to do this then I believe that you can also do it so kindly give it a try and please give me feedback if you've been able to I am from Accra Ghana and I also teach how to make wigs and weaves so I'm gonna leave my email address in the description box below and you can contact me if you have any other questions and I've attached my Instagram handle and Facebook handle so you can always send me a message whenever you're having difficulties and I'll be glad to assist you so at this point I'm just cutting off the excess hairs that I don't need I'm just shaping it but I'm not really trimming much I'm just dressing it so that I don't have stray hair sticking out or out of place so I'm doing the need for so at this point I'm going to be tonguing the hair but your heat should be up to about um, 230 degrees in order to be able to style the hair to go in the direction that you need or to um, lie down nicely I use the bonding glue coupled with the spritz to give it a firmer hold. I start um, sticking the track with the glue onto the cap and I make sure I exert a bit of pressure onto it so that it can stick properly. If you don't do so, it will easily come off. And then again, this is what I'm going to use for the final seal. So I put a bit of glue onto it and then I, I roll it inside out. After I'm done doing this, I'm going to use heat or a straightener to press it flat so that it can lie down flat. 
Then after that, I will add a bit of glue to the, um, the place where I'm supposed to put the ceiling. And then I'll apply a bit of spritz and then press it in. So that will be complete. So when I'm done doing this, I just use scissors and I press it in. Or you can even use um, a tail comb or any other sharp or pointed edge to push it in to ensure that it has a firmer hold. So you can decide to put a bit of spritz all over the hair and you are good to go. I'm using a white tooth comb to style it a bit and I'm trimming the sides that are sticking out. But all said and done, we are through with this. So this is the outcome of the hair. I didn't really style it. I didn't style it that much, but this is what it looks like. I think it looks okay. So you can either have it looking this way or the previous um, one that you saw me style. So guys, if this video was helpful, kindly subscribe, kindly like this video and turn on your notification bell. Please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. And if the other videos you'd like me to do a tutorial on, kindly let me know too. Thank you so much for your time. See you again very soon. Thank you. Bye.